I tried to bring you from zero up there, but you didn't come on the way with me, did you? Right, we do it again. Are you ready for the next act? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Hey, the Lapid! Are you ready Wow, thanks for coming, everyone. This is really cool. Um, I don't work in a museum. I'm, uh, I'm an academic. Uh, but I work at the Courtauld Institute of Art, so uh, it's kind of like a museum. We do stuff in the gallery, that kind of thing. But I'm not talking about the Courtauld tonight. Is there anybody here who works at the Royal Institute of British Architects? Awesome. Is there anybody here who works at the V&A? Really? They told me they were coming. <laughs> you can tell them I said that. So, um, basically, I'm going to spend the next, oh my god, eight minutes and 30 seconds taking you through something that I did four days ago. And that was the product of 18 months of collaborative work with the v and the Reba Partnership. It's the first time anything like this has ever been done. We took a group of 16 teenagers, aged 16 to 19, who all want to be architects or art historians, or some of them stupidly want to be architectural historians like me. I tried to pick it up, you know. And, uh, and basically, I worked with an architect who really knows what he's doing as an architectural draftsman. He's also a sculptor. His name is Anderson Inge. He's amazing. The person who put us together is Liz Grant, who's the education curator at Reba. And it was a bit of a conspiracy because he's a Texan. And so he sits down and he talks to all of these British kids that we're working with and he says, y'all, a lot. Mm. And, um, and I'm not American. I'm Canadian. Uh, thanks for playing. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and so I have the accent that I have. And Liz, the curator, is from New York. And so uh, basically all these kids are sat in a room with us and they're like, what's going on? Are we in some strange North American parallel universe? But no, they were in the Sackler Center at the V&A. So basically that's what we did. It took ages and it happened a couple days ago. So I have not actually spoken to anyone really about this or about what occurred. It was kind of amazing. And so I was writing down some notes and uh, my partner, who's here tonight uh, and who spent a long time as a professional comedian, intimidating, ah, um, I, I borrowed my pen and wrote down on my sheet, knob gag. So uh, watch out for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about ambition. I'm going to be talking about drawing and seeing, learning, designing, and understanding. I'm going to be talking about, uh, I am talking about, I guess, the potential for new collaborative ways of doing arts education. And I really believe in this stuff. I'm a university educator, but no matter who I'm working with, I think it's amazing and really worth doing. Um, I'm also going to be talking about failure and shame. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's get the show on the road. Really no. And as an art historian, a lot of the time at parties, people come up to you and say, what do you do? And I say, I'm an art historian. And they say, oh, so you paint. Mm -hmm. No, 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 definitely not. And I'll get to that in a second. No. <laughs> and I worked for an architectural company for a good long time as a researcher and a consultant. And so I worked with architects all the time. But basically, it was my job to go to places like the Houses of Parliament or... Uh, where else did we do? Or Kew Gardens or Claudia Schiffer's house? That was fun. Um, and, and tell people, particularly private clients, no, you cannot put a gorilla-shaped swimming pool next to your 16th century manor. No, you can't. So that was what my job was. Um, and so uh, I think it's the best job ever. It's awesome. And so when I work with the VNA, which I do quite a lot as a lecturer in a variety of ways, um, I bring all of that stuff to it. But yet, I have deep anxieties about what I'm doing and what I'm doing on a Saturday with an architect who knows how to draw in particular because the event was create architectural drawing. Not create art history, not create research consultancy for 16-year-olds, how to make architectural drawings. So out of my comfort zone in a great big way. So this is a part of the Courtauld's collection. It's from the 1520s. It's one of the best drawings Michelangelo ever did, okay? So when you spend all day looking at stuff like this, we had an amazing exhibition about Michelangelo a while ago. It was pretty cool. I did a lot of education work for it. And you try to draw, and you end up making stuff like this. <laughs> and uh, this isn't actually my work. Uh, <laughs> this is something that I found by Googling bad drawing today at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, there we go. Innocent request. Creepy. Uh, for some reason, that's really strange to me. So the people who we were working with want to be like this guy, Frank Lloyd Wright. This guy? Who's this? Le Corbusier. Yay, well done. Uh, suddenly I'm teaching. Uh, <laughs> or, or this woman. Who's that? Zaha Hadid, yeah, and this is one of the most glamorous photos of her. If you Google woman architect, this is pretty much the only woman you'll see, sad. Which brings me on to this, which is my mediocre feminist cartoon. And I was so happy because uh, it, is, it is kind of shitty, isn't it? It's, it's kind of a shitty cartoon, but it gets the message across. Again, not my work. And uh, the thing that I want to point out to you about this is that I was really, really pleased and more surprised than I should have been, maybe, that half and half 
of the students that we taught together about architectural drawing on Saturday were young men and young women. And that made me so, so happy. And I really loved it because we went around the table and one of the young women who was sitting there, uh, we were asking them about what brought them there and she said, I want to be an architect. I'm very interested in engineering. I'm doing maths and further maths. And I was like, oh, respect. <laughs> I can barely add up after a meal in a restaurant. So good for you. Uh, so the kind of things that we were doing was encouraging them to look around them in a variety of innovative ways. So Anderson was teaching them how to actually make drawings and we passed out materials and got them to do stuff and to think about elevations, plan sections. I was teaching them about the tradition of drawing and about the relationship between drawing and knowledge, drawing and building, all that sort of stuff. So we were looking at things like this in the VNA's collection and things like this. So uh, we were also really interested in world traditions of drawings and in what drawing is for and what you can do with it and the relationship between two-dimensional and three-dimensional space. And then there's some wonderful things like this. Uh, for, that, for that gold, who did this? Anybody know? British architecture enthusiasts. It's a house near London. Oh, so nice guess, nice guess. Robert Adam, amazing 18th century architect. There is a Robert Adam who's an architect now, not him. He makes crappy buildings, but, uh, but, but um, I think. But, but this guy did wonderful things. So uh, yeah, it's Zion House, it's amazing, go see it. So one of the things that we taught people how to do is purposes of drawing. And when I think about architectural drawing, because I'm a specialist in 19th century British architecture, I really love Victorian stuff, it's just what I do. Um, the, the whole like men in hats, olden days, period time stuff, that's me, that's the sort of thing that I do. I wrote a whole PhD about men in hats like that. So uh, some of whom were even architects at Oxford and Cambridge. You can ask me about my PhD later. It was a really fun time. And so uh, this is, uh, this is of course, probably the, what, the second most interesting museum in South Kensington? Where is this? The first? I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about this later. Anyway, so, um, and it's really interesting because it's a, it's, a, it's a temple to science in many ways. It's a natural history museum, really exciting stuff. So I think about architectural drawing like this, but maybe it's for something else. So this is what we taught or sort of re, uh, reprogrammed over the course of five hours, the people on our course to think about. This is what drawing is for. So portraying, imagining, recording, measuring, instructing, so like a letter to your builder, diagramming, mapping, dissecting, speculating. You can do all kinds of stuff with drawing. So this was one of our main issues. Drawing is not just describing. It's not a matter of you, if I was to hand out pen and pencil and paper, which was one of my thoughts orig originally, that would have been ambitious for all of you, to the entire audience, and to get you to think about what drawing is. Would you try to draw the person next to you? Would you try to draw this? Would you get really bored, try to draw me, whatever? You know, we, we encourage them to draw all the time. We told them not to look at us too much and to actually make stuff. They made over 30 drawings during the course of the day. They were tired by the end of it. And then we had an exhibition of their work afterwards and asked them to critique it. And they were like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm tired now. I don't want to do this anymore. But um, one of the things that they said is that the drawings that they produced had nothing to do with accuracy. They were admiring one another's drawings based on things like conviction, tone, contrast, confidence. I really like that. I thought it was really amazing. So drawing is not just describing. It's not just about observing. It's about learning and thinking. And so I guess part of my problem, too, is that as a Victorianist and as someone who's really dedicated to taking students at the Courtauld out into the wilds of South Kensington, uh, pretty tame for wilds in some ways, and showing them crazy, crazy buildings like this, I didn't really get a chance to. There's an amazing Albertopolis exhibition at Reba uh, at the VNA right now, room 128A. Please go. We didn't get a chance to go there, which made me really sad because I freaking love Victoria and Albert. I think it's amazing, and I didn't get a chance to tell any of them about it, so now I'm telling you, go see the Albertopolis exhibition. But this is where my students went, and that was the most amazing thing about it. They went there. They went there. They didn't use these. They used these. So how you get from inspiration to creation was our main issue. And to be totally honest, drawing in public was pretty much as scary as my viva. And uh, because I don't draw. And so this is my little sketchbook that I produced over the weekend. It's full of terrible things. And so this whole thing is really about risk. And the relationship between education and risk is absolutely crucial, especially when we're working collaboratively. And if we don't figure that out, we're totally screwed. So that's what we need to do. And I really hope that that's what we do more of, because these kids got a lot out of it, and so did I, because it was shame and failure, and it was also awesome. Thank you.